Hello everybody and welcome to the Sunday pre-recorded video. So today we had a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. The first thing I wanna talk about is yesterday's video, which uh, if you take a look at the uh, comment section, either you absolutely loved it or it just kind of went over a lot of people's heads. And this was a great interview we had. It was about the Bitcoin power law. And this was with uh, Giovanni Santostasi. He is a PhD and an astrophysicist and he just laid out exactly why Bitcoin is the way it is, the law behind it. It's almost like nature. And he gives a lot of great explanations of where things are going as he predicts Bitcoin going to 4 million. So I linked that video in the description. Definitely check that one out. That one, when I, when I heard what he had to say, it made me realize just how delicate we are in this whole cycle. And when people look at the price and get zoned in, it really is important to, uh, when in doubt, zoom out and just take a look at where we're going. So uh, again, link in the description, we can go from there. So today, I I wanna talk about some other, uh, other pieces of the puzzle in crypto and digital asset space. Now we know where Bitcoin's going, right? And if you just wanna be safe, Bitcoin's the way to go, as Giovanni talked about. But I think right now, as we see a big, huge pullback for the altcoin market, we really wanna take a look at, okay, what's next and where should I be? I want you to be prepared for the things that are about to happen. And I can't give you an, an exact definitive answer about where things are going, but we can get clues as to how different projects are building. And we're gonna talk about two right now. And this is, of course, is not all encompassing, but we're gonna talk about Solana and Tuncoin. Now there's a lot of different altcoins that I have. Uh, if you've been watching the channel, you know that I have uh, well over uh, 60 different altcoins, but uh, I just taking a look at these two different projects. If we're gonna talk about risk, things are on the horizon. So this was from uh, Mert from Helios. He talks about, today we're introducing, of course, we're talking about Solana. ZK compression to Solana directly on the L1 without requiring L2s. He talks about this changes everything. We're going to compress on-chain state to get 10,000 X scale improvements and get one step closer to building the financial computer, unstoppable global state machine. And he gives examples. To take an airdrop today for a million users. This would cost about a quarter of a million dollars, $260,000 for state alone. Now it's 50 bucks. That's 5,200 times cheaper but a token account is just one example of this. Everything in Solana is an account. And it goes into some more examples. I'll link this in the description. You can check it out. But what was interesting to me was he talked about the cost and the compression amount and just how massive the compression actually is because there's an issue here. Now, we know that Solana is fast when it's up. Uh, yeah, uh, look, I'm not going to give Solana a free pass, okay? They have its problems. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and say it's perfect because it's not. It goes down and we make fun of it and then it comes back up. Now here we are. But if they can pull this off, it's very interesting. But there was some there was some dichotomy between like people who like, we heard of it, of it being like an L2 versus an L1. And as Mert talks about, he's like, no, it's an L1. Well, it's not. And I totally the founder comes out and says, look, this is he responds to the criticism. And he says, look, it's an L2. It's an L2 that doesn't need a security council, a multi-sig. Users don't need to switch chain IDs. They don't need a governance token, don't need an external sequencer. Solana validators still get all the transaction fees. It's like an L2 with all the, all the headaches. So take it as you see fit. Maybe it's just, just tongue in cheek where you're saying, yeah, it's an L2, but it's like we're gonna do a whole nother uh, token for it. This is what it does. And there's a, there's a different layer to it. I don't really care what you call it. All I care is that we get it better, faster, cheaper. And that's what people will invest into but i'm not going to leave it there because i want you to do your own research because just some guy talking to his computer is not good enough i'm going to link this in the description this is artemis and you can take a look at daily active addresses daily transactions total value locked dex trading volumes revenue fees and a whole host of other different uh, pieces just take a look at these six i'm going to link this in the description and what you can do is you can add in your own uh, cryptos and compare that against what I just talked about. Like on this example, I got Aptos, Avalanche, Ethereum, Near, Sui, Polygon, Solana, Cardano, Optimism, Arbitrum, Base, and Ton. So I want you to take a look at this and then you make your own decision because you're smart enough to figure this out. So that's just on that piece of Solana. The next piece that I'm pretty excited about is Ton and Ton Coin. There's a, there's a couple of different reasons why I'm excited. Not because Pantera Capital is raising a bunch of more funds to actually buy more but it's about what they're doing in the background 
how they overcome or overcame adversity and what they're doing with apps to sidestep Apple and Android. So here's what we got. Pantera is betting big on ton. First of all, uh, Pantera has like 4 billion assets under management. And before everybody's like, ooh, that, sound, that sounds great. Uh, they're pretty much a spray and pray. I mean, I'm sure they do their own due diligence, but I mean, <laughs> come on. Come on. Look at all the stuff they're investing into. Really? And they're, they're, trust me, not all these are going to be winners. So just take this with a grain of salt. But it is good, especially what they talk about. Here's what we got. So Pantera's new ton fund, that's pretty funny, ton fund, comes shortly after the firm made its largest ever investment in tons since 2000, since its founding in 2003, excuse me. Pantera did not disclose any deal terms, but the email seen by the block notes the investment was made in the ton token at a significant discount to the spot price. First of all, let me ask you something. This is just a quick question that I have for everybody. Would you like to see something where like you could get a massively discounted token, not one that's pre-TGE or pre-token generation event or stuff like the VCs get in, but would you like to see something where like you're like, hey, I would like a pretty massive discount on these tokens that are already out, even if I have to lock them up. If you would, I would like you to put that comment in the comment section below about if that's something that you could see value. Let's say you get like a token like 30, 40% off, but you got to hold it for six months to a year. Would you do it? That's the question. Anyhow, links in the description or comments down below, I should say. So the Pantera Foundation said, we believe the ton network is still in its early stages and we're excited to witness the adoption of its ecosystem and new features by the Telegram user base. Ton was initially launched by Telegram. This is just a little bit of history. So Ton was actually launched, the actual token was launched by the Telegram Foundation. Unfortunately, Gary Gensler, actually this was before Gary, this was 2019. United States SEC claimed in 2019 that Telegram's sale of tokens called Grams violated federal securities laws. Where have we heard that before? And in 2020, Telegram and its subsidiary Ton issuer Inc. agreed to return over $1.2 billion to investors and pay an $18.5 million civil penalty. And this just goes over the history of Telegram and Ton and what actually happened, how they kind of bounced back. So if you want to talk or learn more about that, there's a great website. It's uh, Dan Teaches Crypto. It's 100% free. It always will be free. And when you sign up, all that requires is your email. I don't even uh, spam you. I just tell you when new, new things are in there. Under Module 4 Reviews, uh, me and Guy over at Coin Bureau, we teamed up and uh, we actually talked about Ton and its history and where it's actually going. So you can check that out. Again, links in the description. So to finish up on this, this piece, the open source community for Ton continue to develop the Ton blockchain independently, but Telegram has continued to support the network. And I know exactly why they did this because actually in another video that we do down here, or there's another video about it, this was uh, the Telegram founder who talks to talk, Tucker Carlson on why they did these specific things. Again, link is in uh, the website itself. So earlier this year, uh, the messaging giant or Telegram introduced an ad revenue sharing system for channel owners that will pay out exclusively in the Ton token, feature a 50-50 revenue split between the platform and channel operators, and that's just one piece. And what to me, what that sounds like is essentially is what YouTube is doing. It's essentially what X platform is doing. It's essentially what a lot of the social media platforms are actually doing, and they're taking that and saying, you know what, we can do that whole thing too. And on top of that, I don't know if you guys knew this. I think we I talk about this a lot on X. I don't talk a lot on this channel. Is that Telegram launched just recently their Telegram App Center or their DApps. And it's kind of hard to find in Telegram because it's kind of in beta as they're kind of rolling things out. But I've been following this about for about three or four weeks or so. There's a link in the description. You have to use that specific link to get to the actual apps bot in Telegram. But when you do, every single day, they are rolling out these new apps. And they are everything from uh, conservative. They're everything from like games. They're everything from like mapping. And everything you can really think about that is on the app and Android store. They're actually doing this piece. And I think what they're doing is they're directly competing with Apple and Android. Of course, when you hear those, those words, competition, Apple and Android, your immediate response would probably be, well, that's great until Apple takes them off their their, their platform or Android takes them off their platform. And to that, I say it didn't matter too much for friend.tech. I don't know if you remember this app, but it was pretty huge a couple months ago. And what it was, it was called a, a PWA, a progressive web application. I didn't really know this, but even if they kick them off, they could be a do a PWA route. And I'm going to tell you that they've already done it.
But what is a PWA? It's basically a suite of tech enabling you to install a website on a device as an application. This implies that you are free to create a site without also building iOS and Android apps. And if we take a look at like the top ones here, they've got one called Tinder. I don't know if you've ever heard about that one. And yes, this is on Apple and Android, but what Tinder did is they made this a progressive web app so they could reach even more people who maybe didn't have access to an Apple and Android. And it's very simple. You just get a link and you just start downloading. You've got that, Make My Trip, which is a pretty big one. But if you scroll down here, to round number, actually past Pinterest, to number seven, you see what's called Telegram. Telegram's been doing this the whole time. And they know that even if Apple and Android shuts them down, which it could very well happen, they've already got their other route and they're already going this, this way. And I gotta tell you, I think this is in the decentralized, na the decentralized nature of where we want to go. So then your next question is this, well, if they're doing so well, how does that compare to like these different apps to what's going on in the real world? Well, let me just take you down a little bit of a rabbit hole. So right here, I'm gonna show you the top seven or eight games in Web2. PUBG, 285 million monthly active users. Fortnite, 240 million monthly active users. Counter-Strike, 35. Minecraft, 33. Roblox, you get the point. There's a lot of people playing this game, or these games, there's a whole host of them. Now, if we compare that to the one of the biggest Web3 games ever, which was Axie Infinity, which was launched in February 2018, it took a couple of years to get its footing, but in 2021, it had over 2.8 million daily active users, which I gotta tell you, doesn't even crack the top 30. But if we take a look also for Web3, here we have uh, DAP Radar, and we can see that uh, Matrix, Motodex, and Pixels, and Sweat Economy, actually. There's a column here called Unique Active Wallets. Pixels has 2 million, Motodex 2.2, Matrix 2.31. So if we, that's just wallets, and those are interactions. That's what separates Web3 from Web2. Wallets, daily active users, I get it. But one of the big games right now and I've talked about this many a times, on Telegram is a little thing called Hamster Combat, which sounds ridiculous, but they have 150 million active players and they have only launched in the last month. So I don't know what, what it's gonna be at the end of the month, maybe 200 million, maybe 250 million, nobody really knows, but that's a direct competition to what we just talked about as far as some of the biggest games in Web2. And that is on Telegram, which will eventually have an airdrop on TonCoin. That is a lot of people to move a lot of things. And the last thing I'll say about TonCoin is this. People will say, well, Rob, didn't you say that this was a centralized type of token and there was 90% of whales who owned it? Yes, I did say that. But as time has gone on, I've changed my tune because I've taken a look at end of the block and their on-chain data. Things change. It goes from the hands of the whales into the hands of us, retail. So I just wanna show you like some comparison. Bitcoin is the most decentralized in my personal opinion. And we've got whales at only 1%. And again, when we talk about whales, it means they own a certain percentage of the total circulating supply or total supply of the tokens themselves. So with Bitcoin, the coin, whales own 1%. And that could also include centralized exchanges. So take that as it may. Investors, which could also be exchange as well, 11%, but retail owns 88%. That is the most decentralized asset we have out there. Now let's take a look at uh, Ethereum. Whales own 41%. Retail owns 49% and investors own 10. So you take whales and investors, that's more than what the retail owns. So it, it, take, it is what it is. If you own Ethereum, I own Ethereum. We'll see how it all works out. And then Dogecoin, which is like the token for the people, right? Well, whales own 42%. Investors, 21%, and retail only a paltry 37%. Cardano, one of the better ones. Whales only own nine. Investors, 20, and retail, 71%, which is pretty good. And TonCoin, whales are only, it's only, it's like, it's like a third and a third and a third. Whales are like 29%, investors are 30, and retail is 41%. And to kind of take a look at this as why I used to say that is because about a year ago or so, this part in green, those are whales. And as time has gone on, they have sold and they have put it out there. But I will remind you, and if you take a look at CoinGecko, TonCoin is near its all-time high. And not too many cryptos and digital assets can actually say that. It's actually doing quite well. And some people say, well, I think it's overvalued right now. And 
And uh, I don't want to get into it because I wanted to get down to it at, when it was a dollar. Well, that's not happening. So at, <laughs> if you take a look at these things and what I just talked about and the, and the growth that is happening, I just allow you to make your own decision. Again, everything that we talked about will be links in the description. And finally, Minutes. Minutes Network is another project that I, I talked about uh, previously about two or three months ago, actually. And we did a deep dive into this on Dan Degen. Now, this is a more risky play than, say, Solana and Tuncoin. I think it could be good. If you like the fact of cutting out the middlemen and you think there's an actual way for blockchain to do that, Minutes is going to do that with the telecommunications industry as they actually have partnerships with, uh, well, not just World Mobile Token, but they actually just landed a government account this week, which I cannot tell you, which will be released next week. Anyhow, watch this deep dive video, links in the description, and that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, I'm gonna talk about it's time sensitive. That's it for this one, I do appreciate you stopping by, I do, and I'll see you on the next one.